I start by drawing the fish body with a soapstone on a piece of 14 gauge mild steel. I leave extra material along the top and along the bottom so that when I forge it or model it, it uses up that extra material. I don't add much to the nose or tail. Usually once I get the silhouette of the nose, I have to go back and add material. Cutting it out here with the plasma cutter. This is a uh, Hypertherm Powermax 350. Knock the slag off with a 14 inch bastard file. Just hit it on the edge and, and that uh, slag will pop right off. Then it goes into the forge. Take it out of the forge and then hammer it over a wooden stump. Start to round it out. Usually it takes me uh, four or five heats before I get it, get it modeled where I want it. This forge is a two burner Whisper Mama from NC Forge. Runs on a 20 gallon propane tank. Because of the size of the fish in the forge, I usually have to cut the tail off halfway through. But I like keeping the tail on that beginning drawing so I can determine the scale and the length of the piece. My tongs here are an old 9-inch pair of pliers that have a rubber hose on the handle. That gives it a little extra cushion and then it uh, gives kind of a springing action to hold them open. After I get the body forged, I go back and draw in the gills and then a line down the center where I want the copper that makes the red belly where I want that to meet the stainless steel on the top of the fish that we're about to overlay. I just draw out the stainless steel and copper overlay pieces with a sharpie. I let them hang long because I'll then cut it at the gills and at the tail right around the tail there's a lot of mild steel so I don't mind if it is a little short at the tail because I'll fill that in with uh, mild steel with the MIG welder. When cutting stainless steel and copper I like to have good ventilation and wear my respirator. After I cut the copper and stainless steel, I clean that up with a file also. This is a little smaller file, a, a magic cut file that I really like to use with my copper. The stainless steel really doesn't have much slag on it. It comes out pretty clean, but you want to get any, anything off so it doesn't contaminate the welds. Here I have a wood stump or just a wood block on top of a countertop at about uh, post vice height. Here I'm welding the stainless steel sheet onto the mild steel body. This is probably about a 20 gauge stainless steel. Once I get that welded on, then it goes into the forge. I can bend it around the body. My preferred method of doing this is actually to do the copper first, to braise the copper on first, clean up the seam, grind away any brass from the brazing, 
and run a bead down that and then do the stainless steel top next. It allows to uh, me to braise that copper on a little better. After you get the stainless steel hammered onto the under the body, usually a little bit of trim work. Just trim that up and knock the slag off. Once that's done, I'll clamp that seam and just weld that together. Throughout the process when forging and then adding the overlay, it's important to lay the fish down flat to make sure you have a clean line. It'll save you a lot of work in the end if you keep that flat as you go. This is welding the copper on. And here I kind of think about just sandwiching the copper between my, my bead of my weld. and sometimes a couple of passes. The copper in this case is the copper sheet has already been annealed so it's nice and soft and ready to hammer. The copper needs to be tacked as you go or else it'll it'll move a lot when it's when it's heated. Here I'm just finishing up hammering the copper onto the body. A lot of times I'll just wrap that copper around the steel. Sometimes I'll, I'll braise it in spots or I'll braise along that weld down the center. Sometimes I'll just tack it and then, and then fold the copper over the steel and that'll, that'll hold tight. A, a silver flux with just a brass brazing rod. And a number two welding tip. brazen steel to copper. You have to move the heat around a lot and usually I get the uh, steel red hot to start sticking the brass to that and then moving it into the copper. Again, trimming off the excess copper at the tail. Anytime you cut, you want to knock that slag off with the file. Keep it clean so that when you braise it or weld it later, it sticks a little better. Here's where I decided to, to go ahead and fold the copper over rather than doing any more brazing along the bottom. That also gives plenty of copper to braise the bottom fins onto. 
So when I braze those fins on, I use uh, a phosphor, copper phosphorus welding bra or brazing rod, and that doesn't stick to steel. So that having that extra copper down there folded over helps those fins to stick to the body. Here I had to kneel it before I folded over the hard. The copper was getting a little hard. So I went ahead and just uh, heated up the copper portion in the forge and then quenched it to make the copper soft and then folded it over the end. Here I'm cutting off the excess copper and stainless steel at the gill. A lot of times I'll end up cutting those gills several times as I overlay metal and then cut it back, overlay and cut it back. Here I'm just welding, I'm grinding down that weld down the center. Grind it down and then hit it with a flapper sanding disc, a 60 grit. And that's the end of part one.